Hello, my Wesley friends. I'm Christopher Albright, pinch hitting for Pastor Doug this week as he and Dee take a much deserved week off to recharge their batteries and be renewed by the Holy Spirit. As part of the message this week, I wanted to share with you a devotional. It's actually an excerpt from a book of an author you may have heard of before. Uh, we have had some Sunday school lessons by this uh, individual who happens to be United Methodist pastor, uh, Adam Hamilton. Uh, he recently wrote a new book called The Walk, and on his website, he has shared uh, various excerpts from that. And I wanted to share one with you that uh, particularly resonated with me. Maybe it'll resonate with you as well. Again, this is from Adam Hamilton's book, The Walk, and this is uh, from that selection. The third essential practice of Christian life is serving. The words serve, serving, service, and servant appear over 1,000 times in the Bible. And most often in Scripture, we learn that we are the servants of God. The book of Joshua reaches its dramatic conclusion as Joshua, now aged and nearing death, says to leaders among the Israelites, now fear or revere the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That is from Joshua 24, verses 14 through 15. This is Joshua's primary ch change, pardon me, primary charge to the Israelites before he died. Serve the Lord. But what does it mean to serve the Lord? Latreo is a Greek word that involves serving God through worship. This, as we have seen, is an important dimension of serving the Lord. But service is not only the act of worship, as important as that is. We are meant to serve God by doing his work and his will in this world. This is a simple but important truth. God's primary mode of working in the world is through people. So we're meant to ask, what does God want or need us to do? Let's consider the work we do to embody God's love and justice, the work we are called to do to heal the world and to help others. In Genesis 6, 6, we read that God looked upon the world he saw, the world he had made, and saw the evil and violence human beings were doing to one another, and, quote, regretted making human beings on the earth, and he was heartbroken. That verse has always moved me. The injustice and evil in the world left God heartbroken. When God looks at our world today, what are the things that continue to break his heart? When God sees pain and brokenness, poverty and injustice in our world, he is moved with compassion. And I think he cries out, as he did to Isaiah so long ago, Whom should I send and who will go for us? And with Isaiah, I believe each of us is meant to respond, I'm here, send me. That's Isaiah 6, verse 8. I've known Christians who seem to believe that all that God wanted from them was to go to church, to pray, to read their Bibles, and to refrain from doing evil. But throughout Scripture, we find that God calls us to do good, to practice justice, kindness, and love. When we fail to do these things, our worship and other acts of devotion are worthless to God. Consider these words from the first chapter of Isaiah. What should I think about all your sacrifices, says the Lord? I'm fed up with entirely burned offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I don't want the blood of bulls, lambs, and goats. When you come to appear before me, who asked this from you, this trampling of my temple's courts? Stop bringing worthless offerings. Your incense repulses me. That's from Isaiah 1, 11 through 13. 
The people were rendering their service to God by bringing their gifts and offering their prayers and songs. But they were neglecting the matters of justice and mercy and kindness. So God said, Learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. That's Isaiah 1, verse 17. Micah, ministering around the same time as Isaiah, offered his well-known response to the question of what the Israelites might do to please God. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That's Micah 6, verses 6 through 8. Similar words show up in other prophets, in the Psalms, and in the book of Proverbs. Particularly meaningful are the words of King Lemuel in Proverbs 31, verses 8 through 9. Speak out on behalf of the voiceless, and for the rights of all who are vulnerable. Speak out in order to judge with righteousness and to defend the needy and the poor. Our older daughter, Danielle, is a public defender. She makes a fraction of what she could be making at a big law firm. She has about 60 cases she's carrying at any given time, more than anyone should have to carry. Ask her why she does it, and she'll tell you she feels called to this work of ensuring that the poor have access to justice and that their rights aren't violated. This is part of the lofty vision captured in the concluding line of the Pledge of Allegiance when we pledge allegiance to our nation, a nation that seeks to provide liberty and justice for all. It is impossible to be the kind of Christ follower Jesus longs for without concern for justice and mercy for the vulnerable, the weak, the marginalized, the poor. Jesus' first sermon was drawn from Isaiah 61 as he read these words, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor. That's Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Jesus devoted much, much of his time to ministry with the poor, the marginalized, and the second class. He ministered with peasant people, with lepers, with the mentally and physically ill. He noted that at the final judgment, people will be judged based upon whether they provided food for the hungry, drink for the thirsty, clothing for the naked, and whether they visited the sick and the imprisoned and welcomed the foreigner. That's Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46. He noted that when we come alongside and help those who are in need, it is as if we are doing this for him. Likewise, when we fail to do this for those who need our aid, it is as though we had turned our backs on him. And again, that entire reading uh, is an excerpt from chapter three of Adam Hamilton's book, The Walk. And if you'd like to read more about Adam Hamilton and his, uh, his uh, book, The Walk, you can go to his website. It happens to be adamhamilton.com. Have a couple of announcements uh, for you this week. Uh, we're very excited. This Sunday, our very own Cindy Thomas will be providing uh, the message. Uh, and she has a very exciting topic uh, entitled, as I, as I find it here, it is called On a Mission. So make sure you, you check that out. If you are with us in person or if you are worshiping with us online, uh, we invite you to come and listen to the words that Cindy will be sharing with us. Some other announcements uh, for you. Uh, Adult Sunday School will be taking place at 1030. Uh, you can get in contact with Jeff Miller if you would like to join in the class. There's always room for more. Uh, this has been a Zoom class, uh, so you can uh, get connected with Jeff and he will he will take care of you there. 
We have several other events uh, coming up, including the Women's Book Club. Uh, they're going to meet on Monday, October 18th at 7 o'clock. Uh, they're going to be reading the book Legacy of Mercy by Lynn Austin. This month, they're going to be meeting at the home of Debbie Moore. New readers are always welcome to join with, in with the discussion. Uh, for more information, you can contact Debbie. And I also want to let you know about uh, something else we're working on uh, here at Wesley, and that is the hospitality team. Wesley Church is, has always been a very friendly and welcoming place, and we want to thank Bob Miller, Martiel Edwards, Gertrude Crawford, Sally McCoy, Joe Bauer, the Washington family, and Dee Eberly for their endless and faithful service of welcoming you to church. If you've been able to join us in person, no doubt you've seen every one of these folks uh, as you walk through the doors. You may have noticed lately that we are trying to improve our hospitality with someone at the entrance so that uh, we can welcome everyone, and then also another greeter providing bulletins at the sanctuary entrance. If you would like to be part of this expanded hospitality team, please talk with Dee Eberly. And lastly, this is looking ahead just a little bit into November. I know we're not even that far through October yet, but you want to mark this down. Uh, All Saints Day uh, res Remembrance will be taking place on November 7th on 2021. We'd like to remember our loved ones who have left us uh, for glory over the past year from October 2020 to present. If you have a loved one you would like to have remembered, please provide the following. A picture, date of birth, date of death of your loved one, your name, and your relationship to the deceased. Information can be shared through email to Martiel Edwards. Um, you can reach her at maed43 at aol.com. And you make sure you want to make sure you do that no later than October 24th. So, anyways, we can those are our announcements. We hope you can you can join us in person uh, these next couple weeks. If not, we love having you online. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for the time when we can gather together, whether we're able to commune in person or online. Lord, we thank you for your spirit, which dwells among us in whichever, whichever way we choose to gather. Lord, we thank you for the spirit of togetherness and unity and love that you bring to your people. Lord, bless this world as we face a pandemic that continues to rear its ugly head. Lord, may you guide us all, guide our thinking, and bring peace amongst your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, folks. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.